go ahead and get started with the meeting of the Regional Transportation Commission. Thank you, Chairman and members of the Commission. Your first item is to conduct your first citizens' participation period. This is the first time set aside for public comment. Anyone wishing to provide public comment with regards to items that are on today's Regional Transportation Commission agenda, please step forward to the microphone, state your name, and limit your comments to three minutes. This is for items that are on today's agenda, sir. Was that? Item three. Okay, very good. Adrian Outlaw, operator. Tracy Sanders would transition smoothly and operate effectively as general manager. She was our one-stop shop, EAP, operation scheduling. She made sure our money was right in payroll, HR, safety. She knew our CBA better than most drivers, administrative and management specialists. Thank you for your service, Tracy. Tracy Sanders' resume speaks for itself. What's also obvious, I keep hearing we have a unique city. Operators are doing a great job. Obvious like night and day. Obvious like Charleston and Sahara is like night and day when the sun goes down. You'll change every light bulb on Charleston. Does the funding for safety stop at Sahara? Francis rolled his eyes when I said this in June. Obviously, our, our city is unique, obviously. We have a unique city. Why compare us to averages? Private sector, population density, population average. We are not average. There are no comparisons. 24-hour liquor, 24-hour gaming, 24-hour marijuana sales on one corner. Scorching summer sun, ceramic tent, Moving to advancing technology forward in the HOV lane, for crying out loud. 30 years of growth, 30 years of transportation in our city. You thought Kansas, your breakfast club buddy? <laughs> right, their, their, their safety record. They were here in June. They heard me also. <sighs> like our union president says, no one is listening. Nod your head and still sit on your hands. Don't shake your head and understand or empathize or like you understand or empathize, roll your eyes like Francis and take some sort of personal attack. Be genuine in your disinterest to do better. Terry Richards, a heart of solid gold and a great wealth of untapped information and knowledge. Nick was trained specifically in transportation and logistics by our US government. Chris was born and raised. How many of you remember Rancho High School in 1990? Thank you, Chris. Billy and Ron, listen, laugh, and learn. They make work fun. I miss working with those gentlemen. Ride high, stay off the turtles. Thank you, Billy. All day one employees. Tony, Tony says, say 25 years plus. Can I say day two? Day two is like 25 years, right? Say, say 25 years plus of service, yes ma'am. Tony, stickler for the rules. They called her the uniform Nazi when policy was important. Mandy, Mandy says I'm aggressive. Terry says, oh, he's just passionate. Jennifer thinks contentious. I am straightforward and direct and that makes people uncomfortable. Imagine our discomfort. Imagine my community's discomfort. Imagine digesting daily and having to regurgitate the obvious to elected and selected chairs. Your level of empathy and concern is obvious. 30 years, never the same vendor twice. Keep A and A uniform. They do a great job. Give them a lifetime contract. A and A uniform. A wise man once said, "We're paying you a lot of money. Do better." Thank you. Anyone else wishing to provide public comment with regards to items that are on today's agenda? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the first public comment period. MJ. Thank you, Chairman. The next item is to approve the agenda. It's in order and ready for your approval. All right, I'm going to change your motion. Move to approve. There's a motion to approve today's agenda. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Chairman. The next item is to receive the CEO report. And. First, we would like to recognize TransDev operator Sarah Gali. To present this item, we have a video with Deputy CEO Chris Cole. So let's go ahead and watch. Thank you, MJ. This month, we're thrilled to recognize an exceptional operator, Sarah Gali. Sarah is no ordinary operator. She is a powerhouse behind our public transit system dedicating an incredible 30 years to her role. Not only is Sarah a deuce driver, she's also an active member of the bid and safety committees. And her unwavering commitment to her job and her enthusiasm for serving passengers are remarkable. Countless riders have shared glowing reviews of her exceptional customer service. Her warmth, kindness, have even inspired one passenger to follow in her footsteps and become a bus operator themselves. So let's now go and surprise Sarah and show how much we appreciate her outstanding service. There's a special person in here somewhere. Sarah, my name's Chris Cole. 
And on behalf of the RTC board and MJ Maynard, I want to present you the Crystal Bustle Award. Wow. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. And we're glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. People follow in your footsteps. You are true, definite leader. You're helpful to management, you're helpful to your peers, you're helpful to the community, you're helpful to everyone. Thank you very much. I was waiting for this bus for 31 years, <laughs> and I'm glad I have it now. I thank everybody. Thank you very much. Is Sarah here? Please stand up. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you for your uh, decades of service to the organization. I concur. Thank you, Sarah. Next, we would like to recognize MV Transportation Paratransit Operator, Carlos Campos. Thank you, MJ. This month, we are honored to recognize Carlos Campos, an operator at MV Transportation with four years experience driving our paratransit vehicles. Recently, while assisting a passenger leaving the bus, Carlos noticed she didn't look well. Trusting his instinct, he inquired about her well-being, and as the passenger started to fall, Carlos acted swiftly, preventing her head from hitting the pavement and ensuring her safety. He then patiently assisted her until she felt better. Now let's surprise Carlos. I'm trying to find a guy named Carlos. Is that Carlos over here? Well, Carlos, my name is Chris Cole. I'm a deputy CEO with RTC. And on behalf of the RTC board and MJ Maynard, I'd like to present you the Crystal Bus Award. Well, you mean a lot to this organization, so I really appreciate your, your efforts and what you do for us. Thank you. You're welcome. I love working with people. I'm a people person. Uh, it, it's just great. I, I love what I do. Hopefully, I retire from here. It's great. I love it. Thank you so much. Is Carlos here? All right, stand up. Let's recognize him. Thank you. <clears throat> so I'm pleased to share that I've been appointed the new uh, vice chair of the board of directors for the American Public Transportation, Transportation Association. Uh, this is a national organization that has more than 1,500 public and private sector transportation companies helping to drive transportation in, in the, really in this new era of mobility. The, this new role will benefit our community as we continue to advocate for the federal funding and policies are looking to enhance our operational services, especially around our workforce and safety and security initiatives, uh, embrace research and technical expertise, and obtain best practices that our agency can adopt. Uh, you know, it's crucial to recognize that the mobility challenges that we face here in Southern Nevada are not unique. They're echoed throughout the country. I hear it from uh, transit CEOs all over North America. Uh, your board colleagues, transit leaders, union representatives, drivers and riders nationwide are grappling with the same issues related to safety, bus driver recruitment and retention, mental health, homelessness, and future funding. And so I'm excited to continue learning from this, this really vast uh, organization uh, and bring back uh, learning and uh, sharing experiences that I, I gain as part of this organization. I just want to say I had the opportunity earlier this year to, to uh, accompany MJ and Angela to the legislative conference in DC. And uh, it's very clear, I'm told the board, that MJ is a rock star amongst public transit uh, officials across the country. So it is no surprise that she was uh, elected to this position. So congratulations Thank on you. behalf of the board. Thank you, Chairman. Mm. So the RTC is proud to work with community partners all month long to promote cycling events, our Bi Biketoberfest 2023. Uh, it's the seven year anniversary of the bike share program and cycling safety. And so last weekend, Bikeshare provided free bike helmets and cycling safety tips at First Friday. 
but the fun is just beginning. Isn't that correct, David Swallow? Tomorrow, partners from the Southern Nevada Bicycle Coalition will unveil their new mural supporting the Let's Get There Together campaign. Additionally, the community has three opportunities to participate in group rides over the next few weeks. To sign up for a ride or get a free 30-day bike share pass, the community can visit rtcsnb.com backslash biketoberfest. And now I'm going to turn it over to Deputy CEO David Swallow. He's going to provide you with a quarterly update on our roadway funding. Excellent. Thank you, MJ. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, David Swallow, Deputy CEO, for the record, I'm happy to report this morning on our quarterly progress. Uh, this is the first quarter of fiscal year 2024. And as you can see on the chart in front of you, to date we have initiated 652 projects since FRI began in January 2014 with 418 of those projects actually completed, another 114 in design or in construction and 120 in design. Looking at the dollars spent to date, you can see here that we've programmed nearly two and a half billion dollars since FRI was initiated. And today we've had nearly 2.2 billion collected in fuel tax revenues with another uh, 333 million in a portion of the sales tax that goes to roadways and trails. Right now, out of the two and a half, uh, you can see here two and a half billion dollars is programmed into projects already with uh, 1.7 billion uh, spent out to date to, through invoices to the contractors and consultants. More importantly, it's the jobs that we've seen uh, cumulatively fiscal year to date. Uh, you can see here over 16,000 jobs have been uh, created or sustained through the fuel revenue indexing program and our motor vehicle fuel tax and sales tax programs. And with that, more importantly, I'd like to talk about some of the projects that were completed in the last quarter. Uh, first up is Clark County Roadway Improvements. These are on Wallapai Way from Russell Road to the 215 and on Flamingo Road between Wallapai Way and Grand Canyon. The improvements you're seeing are from Flamingo Road between Wallapai and Grand Canyon. The improvements included repaving and striping the roadway, installation of LED streetlights, and the addition of ADA accessible curb ramps. The project wrapped up in August of 2023 at a total cost of approximately 6.9 million. The next project I'd like to highlight is in the city of Las Vegas. This is uh, both a roadway and pedestrian improvements on Jackson Avenue from H Street to C Street. The improvements on Jackson Avenue included widening sidewalks, repaving and striping the roadway, and adding shade, tree, shade trees and dual arm street lights. So providing lighting both for the roadway as well as the sidewalks where people are walking. The project wrapped up in July of 2023 at a cost of approximately $5.8 million. And then finally, in the city of Henderson, their roadway improvements were on Sunridge Heights Parkway near Raiders Way and, and the Costco entrance. The improvements included the addition of Median Island street lighting, storm drains, and a right turn lane on Raiders Way at Sunridge Heights Parkway. Project wrapped up in August 2023 at a cost of approximately $2.1 million. There are a number of other projects that were completed. We just wanted to highlight a few of them for you here today. And this concludes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions or comments from the board? I'll just note one other project that I was uh, uh, at yesterday was the signalization at um, Sunset and Quarter Horse in front of Southern Hills Hospital. That was a, a, a roadway uh, project that was funded by FRI. And I will tell you, I was there with the hospital CEO and many of their senior leaders, and they are just so ecstatic okay. with the additional level of safety for both uh, emergency vehicles that will be entering the hospital and, and obviously uh, patients who are, are going to the hospital. So okay. these, these types of projects matter to, to the people who need them the most. Definitely. And that concludes your CEO report. Very good. Any other comments or questions from the board? If not, thank you very much. Thanks, Chairman. The next item is to receive the Nevada Department of Transportation Director's Report from Deputy Director Jeff LaRue. Thank you. Director LaRue. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, and members of the board. Uh, I'm Jeff LaRue. 
Thank you. Um, where was I? Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. I'm Jeff LaRue, Deputy Director with the Department of Transportation, and today I'll provide, be providing NDOT's director's report. I'll kick off the presentation with a project update, the Centennial Bowl. Uh, phase 3D of the Centennial Bowl is scheduled for substantial completion this fall. Uh, this was the final phase of the project, which totaled nearly $500 million and was phased over 16 years. The pictures here show the new westbound movement of CC215, and this is expected to open in the next month. A ribbon cut cutting ceremony is planned for December 4th, but we'll, more details to come on that. There have been several emergency projects over the last couple of months. Kyle Canyon and Lee Canyon at Mount Charleston remain closed to visitors due to ongoing repairs in the area. Many of popular trails at Mount Charleston sustained extensive damage from August storm, including Mary Jane Falls, Cathedral Rock, Acassis, Bristlecone Pine, and Fletcher Canyon. Carpenter, Carpenter Canyon and Walls Canyon roads remain inaccessible due to in significant, due to significant flooding washouts as well. In the aftermath of the storm, NDOT identified extensive damage in 43 different locations along these roadways. Among the most notable challenge was a 900 foot section of Kyle Canyon that was completely washed out. NDOT is cooperating with Clark County and the Forest Service to do our best to balance the desire to open the mountain along with the safety of the visitors and residents. For updates on response and recovery efforts on Mount Charleston, uh, the public is encouraged to visit GoMountCharleston.com. SR-158 or Deer Creek Road connects Kyle Canyon Road and Lee Canyon about halfway up the mountain. Deer Creek Road suffered significant damage near the uh, Mahogany Grove Campground. An emergency contract to repair the road began October 2nd and the goal is to have the road open before the snow flies. Until then, the road will be, remain closed to all motors until repairs are completed. Kind of changing gears a little bit, um, wrong way driver detection system. Construction is nearing completion on wrong way driver detection systems at I-15 and Star, US-95 in Durango, US-95 in Sky Canyon, and US-95 in Kyle Canyon. And these should be completed by the end of the month. Then final, uh, final calibration and testing on the system will take place in November before they're fully operational. Last but not least, uh, an update on the Tropicana Interchange Project. Uh, currently, we're working on the north bridge of Tropicana. As you may have seen, we have recently closed I-15 and the surrounding surface streets during overnight hours to allow us to set bridges, set deck panels, and pour bridge decks. Most closures are on the horizon into the middle of October as this work continues. We're also continuing to work at Harmon on the south side ramps with anticipated completion in December, early December. Uh, these Harmon ramps will not be open for the F1 event, but lane restrictions on Harmon and lane restrictions on I-15 North associated with the work are expected to be removed the November 12th through November 19th race week. Um, speaking of F1, NDOT <coughs> will be completing some temporary improvements to accommodate the F1, uh, like widening the Tropicana roadway on either side of I-15, creating a dedicated northbound off-ramp to eastbound Tropicana, that's a free right turn movement, and as part of this free right turn movement, as recommended by F1's traffic consultant, Kimley Horn, the northbound off-ramp left turn to westbound Tropicana will be taken out of service. The loss of this left turn movement is probably the largest impact we'll see on the interchange as part of the F1 accommodations. These temporary improvements will begin in late October and be completed no later than November 12th. All temporary, all temporary F1 improvements will be removed in the weeks following the event as the project moves towards the Super Bowl. <clears throat> NDOT is working hard to ensure the traveling public, project stakeholders, resort corridor employees and visitors are informed of lane closures and traffic shifts well before they happen. And that concludes my report if there's any questions. Thank you, Director. Questions or comments? Mayor? Uh, I'm wondering, Jeff, uh, in the future and as we look ahead, is there any way that NDOT <laughs> can find the funds either from reserves or a set aside fund to um, supplement income of businesses affected by closure. I think the businesses uh, that are very severely affected and you could see it in this one in the in and out burger with that street closed for the overpass, there has to, I mean, they go out of business. And I don't think we ever look at what NDOT or these long-term street closers do 
to small mom and pop operated businesses that have no other source of income. Obviously, In and Out Burger is very successful, and they've got plenty of other ways to handle that loss. But I'm wondering if that can go into the discussion, or does that go to the legislature um, and have to proceed up from lobbying? I wouldn't even begin to know. But I know the affect, as we see mm -hmm. it and hear it all the time from our constituents that are affected by severe road lengthy closure. And so NDOT being a state organization, I think could take a pilot program, look at it, and figure out a way with certain parameters of when these meters are met that a supplement on a monthly basis or weekly basis could be started. I will take that back with me. Um, but before the project begins, there's extensive, extensive outreach to all the local um, right. businesses affected by this. And we ensure them that they have the access that they need and, and help them get the word out that there is a project coming. But I, th that's a good idea, and I will take it back and see what we can do. And you have a rubric that shows that you have to have these certain bench parked, but that we, the state, realize in, in improving our roads that we can supplement your missing income because people can't get to you. Great, and then we'll Thank copy you. it at the county or at the city and not the other municipalities if it works. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner? Yes, um, we have lots of issues on 95 and the neighborhoods surrounding that as far as unhoused and cleaning, cleaning up the neighborhoods. And is there someone that we could have as a point contact with, with uh, your agency so when we do these cleanups, we can coordinate together? Because I know you do cleanups, we do cleanups, but if we work together, otherwise they'll just jump the fence and, and there, we can have no access to it. So uh, if you could reach out to my office or we could give me somebody <laughs> at your office that I could reach out to. to have a, we have a group of, that meets regularly and if we could have somebody from, the, from your agency there, it'd be great. You bet, I will, um, I will get, um, Mario Gomez, our district engineer, would probably be the point of contact on that, and I will get his name and number over to your office. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Seeing none, thank you very much for your report. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the next item is to approve the consent agenda, which uh, consists of items 5 through 32. It can be taken in one motion. Right. I'll entertain a motion. There's a motion to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next item, item number 33, is our Title VI fair analysis. It is to receive information on this analysis and to allow for public comment. RTC Manager of Revenue Operations, Michelle Whitney, will provide the presentation. Michelle. Thank you. There it goes. Good morning. Thank you, MJ. Michelle Whitney, Manager of Revenue Operations for the RTC, for the record. Pursuant to the Federal Transit Administration Circular 4702.1b and in compliance with the United States Department of Transportation Title VI Regulations 49 CFR Part 21, the fare equity analysis will assess whether the proposed fare changes would cause either a desperate impact to minority customers or a disproportionate burden to low-income customers through a public engagement process. If I could just clarify, yesterday when we were briefed, when you said FAIR, I was thinking F-A-I-R, but this is actually F-A-R-E, right? Correct, uh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, the proposed FAIR changes or additions are the basis for our Title VI uh, FAIR equity analysis. Using the new tap and go feature that's available in the Ride RTC mobile app, customers will have access to a new single ride fare on the Las Vegas Strip. The new single ride fare will be $4 at a full fare rate and $2 at a reduced fare rate. Launching in December of this year, the RTC will be accepting contactless open payments. Customers that have a Visa or MasterCard branded credit or debit card or Apple Pay or Google Pay will be able to pay for a single ride fare on all fixed route vehicles. And in Q1 of 2024, 
the RTC will be launching a new reloadable smart card. Customers would be able to obtain the smart card at the Bonneville Transit Center, our RTC administration offices, or also at select retailers throughout the Las Vegas Valley. And customers will also have the option to link this card to their existing Ride RTC mobile app account, where then they would be able to access any funds that they have on that account or any passes that they have as well. As a requirement of the Title VI Fair Equity Analysis, there is a 60-day public comment period, which started on September 5th of 2023 and will continue through November 3rd of 2023. Part of that public comment period is also three public meetings, first of which was the Transportation Access Advisory Committee, which was held on September 27th the RTC Executive Advisory Committee, which was held on September 28th, and today's RTC board meeting. The engagement process also includes a Title VI survey. Any customers wishing to participate can access the survey online at rtcsnv.com forward slash Title VI survey. Thank you, Ms. Whitney, for your presentation. Yep, you're welcome. Um, any questions or comments from the board? I think these are some great, great improvements. Uh, Councilman Shaw. Uh, in the briefing yesterday, we talked about cost per transaction for the tap and go, and I just want to make sure we follow up and, and get that information back to us so we don't understand what our cost is. Very good. Any okay. other questions or comments? All right. Uh, this is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to provide uh, public comment with regards to the fair analysis uh, that was presented? Please step forward to the microphone, state your name, and spell your name for the record. Limit your comments to three minutes. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public comment period, um, and we'll move on. To, we don't need a vote, correct? Correct. Okay. All right, then we'll go ahead and move on to the next item. Thanks, Chairman. Um, the next item, 34, is to receive information regarding the sale of RTC-owned real property through a public auction. Chief Legal Officer David Clyde will provide information on the item. Good morning, David Clyde, Chief Legal Officer for the RTC for the record. Uh, the RTC publicly noticed uh, the auction of property located at or near 840 South Commerce Street in Las Vegas, Nevada in the newspaper and on our website starting on September 21st, 2023. As a part of the terms of the auction, interested parties were given between October 5th and October 10th, 2023 to submit sealed bids. At this time, the RTC has not received any qualified bids, and so the board may move to list the property for sale. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Clyde. Any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion uh, to authorize staff to list the property for sale. Move to authorize uh, the request of staff to list the property. All right, there's a motion on the floor. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Chairman. Item, uh, next item is 35, is to receive legal information from our attorneys, but there are no items to discuss, so we can move on to your last uh, agenda item, which is to receive your uh, public, pu public assistance participation period. Ooh, say that five times. Very good. Uh, this is a second time set aside for public comment. This is the opportunity for uh, members of the public to provide public comment with regards to any items that are presently before the RTC board. Um, please state your name for the record uh, and limit your comments to three minutes. I'll go ahead and go to Mr. Keyes. Ms. Jones. Good morning. My name is Shelly Jones, and I am very excited about having Silver Ride be permanent, and I really like that program very much, and I thank you for doing this because even though RTC, the buses, I do like riding them, and I like you serve as well, but I, and Tango, but I really appreciate Civil Ride because it really helps out everybody in concern. Even though um, some of the blind people that I do know don't like it, it doesn't matter because in this world today, um, good and bad things are going to happen, and I look forward to you guys coming on the 25th of October to discuss everything about Silver Ride, all the programs that you guys offer. So have a great day. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Ms. Jones. Anyone else wishing to provide public comment? Please step forward to the microphone. We do have two microphones, so feel free to, to line up. I'll pick one. <laughs> Good morning, uh, uh, William Lynn, Las Vegas operator. I came today to talk about a couple of different things with the, you know, we're still having a lot of problems with people getting attacked on the buses. And if you see these right here, these are pretty much as what is on a lot of our buses still. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a sore throat. Um, and, and a lot of the stuff that's going on with the attacks now, these are being pulled down. Um, I know we're working on trying to get more people out there, transit police, but we need either something stronger than this to go to the window. People are throwing drugs underneath at the operators, urine, stuff like that. And these are being pulled down real easy. They look real strong on here. Not that, they're also real scratched. They were put in, what, two, three years ago now? And these weren't supposed to be like long term. Um, I'd also like to say that with a lot of the stuff that happened uh, in the last couple weeks, and I'm just going to say just um, with the fatalities and stuff, um, I'd like to say that I think that Transdev, man, distinctively that Jennifer, um, that is now the acting GM or the GM, did a great job in informing the union and getting us out to respond with our operators. And on the scene, I'd like to speak. I speak a lot about the operator, the operation, and when it's got its problems. So I'd like to make sure that I say when it doesn't. Um, we still got a long, long way to go, plenty of issues. But the road soups—they need the recognition. They've been stuck through the same thing we have. The SST supervisors, um, the radio BOC, like Chris. Uh, there's too many good people to mention. Um, our SDMs, Jackie, Erwin, uh, Ben, Danielle. They've been through this the same way we have. We lost a lot of good people the last month. Um, they went back to Keolis or wherever they went. We lost a lot of good people, as I said, would happen if we don't start changing the way we're doing things and start finding a direction. Um, I'm hoping that that direction is starting to come. Uh, I, I won't say I see a light at the end of the tunnel, but I do see that they uh, got a lot of distinctive changes happening, in, especially in the last week. But uh, my main concern was of the safety glass, and obviously the other people that have been through it with the drivers that have been working to try, and they're just as lost as we are in this situation. Um, supervisors just recently had a shift change in less than 24 hour notice. The person who did that, I'm not even gonna use profanity, but if you told me in less than 24 hours that my family didn't matter enough, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, and although this time period is not for us to have a dialogue, I do want to let you know, particularly on the, on the safety glass, we are actively working on that issue and hope to have an update of the next board meeting on that specific issue, so. Thank you. Of course. Thank you, sir. Good morning. My name is Stanley Small, senior organizer with the ATU International. Um, I was sent here personally to um, come talk to the board about an issue that's going on on the RTC property. Um, I don't know if y'all aware of the active um, role that the union is playing in helping the Silver State employees um, become unionized. They made a decision, a conscious decision, to form a union on that property, which is their right. Um, most recently, uh, we we pushed our paperwork. We actually asked uh, Silver State to recognize us. We had over 70% of the card signed of people wanting to form a union. Um, and they ignored us, so we had to file the paperwork. And we had to f file it um, a little quicker than we really wanted to because the looming government shut down. We wanted to get our paperwork in. Since such time, um, I believe his name is Mark. He's been at that property threatening workers. That is unacceptable. Every man and woman in this country has a right to form a union. They have a right to do that without fear of reprisal. Um, we think it's, we, 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 we see that the RTC did a favor by actually implementing that whoever took over the contract, Silver State had to be a part of that. 
but there has to be some integrity. Stand, let let the workers choose. And I understand that he's concerned. He's been um, untouched by a union for about 15 years now. But the workers are tired. The workers are realizing the men and women that work right on the other side of the gate is making $20 an hour for the same work that they're being paid $13 an hour. There's something really wrong with that, right? Um, just most recently when y'all had that big storm here, um, workers were not allowed to send those buses that were filled with mud in it through the wash machine. They had to get down on their hands and knees and wipe, wipe these buses down and get the mud out of it. Something is truly wrong with that. And um, we're asking you guys to whoever your contact is at Silver State, please tell them to stop. Um, we are planning on filing a slew of ULPs and it's not gonna be nice. These workers have a right to choose. And if they're choosing a union, that's their business, right? They have they have that right to choose, and we're we're just asking. I believe um, it's your it's in your view to uh, ask these folks to stop. Let let the workers choose. They should not be threatened. When we went on the property last night, they was literally scared to talk to us. He held the meeting and told them, if I catch you talking to anybody from the union, you will be fired on the spot. Um, he recently just fired somebody two weeks ago um, uh, that was openly supporting the union. He fired him. Um, this is this is unacceptable, and and I'm sure that you guys don't want um, the RTC don't want their name attached to anything of that nature. So we're coming to you guys first before uh, we have to take matters into our own, to our own hands. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Good morning. I'm Mayor Goodman. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm here today because I have a um, paratransit. Sorry, ma'am. Can you state your name, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Gwen Willis. Thank you. And I'm here on behalf of the subscription that I have for my son, Peter. Um, I know my time is limited, so I have a um, log, some paperwork I want to log in or give to the recording secretary. But anyway, <clears throat> um, the drop-off time is like at 9 a.m. However, recently the drop-off time is constantly not being implemented and it appears to be intentional. I have emailed customer service a number of times, but I have yet to get a response or a follow-up. Although after sending emails in, subscription is, um, after sending the, um, the emails, then the, it, it works for a while. I get the um, the time that um, the drop off time that I asked for, but due to like I said, due to my limited time, I did make notes so I don't have to go over everything. I would also like to state that I have notified the customer service about the malfunction of the um, the notified texting that have not worked properly for months. The notification text is like an hour to 15 hours late. I have gotten mail um, notification text on Friday p.m. for unscheduled pickups on a Saturday. I am um, confused why a company would want to pay for a system that is not working. I got a minute left. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to provide public comment? Please come on forward. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the board, RTC leadership and RTC staff and members of the public. My name is Lauren Skyver. I'm COO for TransDev US. And I just wanted to make a few comments about how we've recognized the challenges that we've faced and the impacts to the service those have created from the startup. With over almost 200 vehicles down, we've still managed to work collaboratively with the RTC executive staff, the RTC maintenance team, and our own maintenance team to bring those numbers up and to prove that by 75%. Though we still have a lot of work to do, we do our and are committed to ensuring that we improve the service, improve the rider's experience, and ensure that the daily lives of our employees is improved as well. 
I came before you last month, and I'll be here this month and the next until we achieve those challenges because we recognize that the riders face the impacts the most, and we are committed to ensuring that we deliver this service. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning. My name is Mark Fernandez. I'm one of the owners of Silver State Transportation. Uh, I just wanted to come up to clarify some things. We are not keeping our people from talking to the union. We have not threatened our people from talking to the union. We really are trying our best to work with the situation. As this gentleman said, we've been in the, we've been, we've had a great relationship with the RTC and our, our subs for the last 15 years. So we just wanted to make sure that everyone knows we are working with the union and nobody has been threatened. Thank you. Thank you. No else wishing to provide public comment this morning? Oh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations, MJ, Rockstar, Mayor Carolyn. How are you doing? Tell all of boss I say hi. Um, what I'm coming to do today is... Sir, I'm would you mind just stating your name? I know we're familiar with you, but you can state your name for the record. My name is Nimrod, Christ Nimrod, N-I-M-R-O-D. Thank you. You can find me in Genesis, the 10th chapter, the 6th to the 10th verse. Okay. Now, I came here talking about the um, Tropicana and University Center Drive intersection. I got an email from a gentleman named uh, Nathan Goldberg, and he dealt with the situation. Matter of fact, we had communication back and forth because some things were not done correctly, but maybe it wasn't done because they didn't have the time, but it's done, and I want to congratulate this gentleman, uh, Nathan Goldberg, manager of the transit planning, manager of transit planning. <laughs> He's a good person. We had a good conversation. And what I am interested about is that, again, I spoke about this bus stop 2056. I've not heard anything about that. That was behind, that was on Sahara and uh, Paradise Road. I've not got, I've not got, I have not got anything about that. Now, I don't go that way, so I don't see what's happening that much. So I would like to get some information, MJ, about what's going on. All right, rock star. <laughs> Congratulations. And uh, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else wishing to provide public comment this morning? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close the public comment period and we are adjourned. Thank you.